On October 22nd, 2009, Microsoft released Windows 7 Worldwide. October 22nd, 2024 marks the 15 year anniversary of Windows 7's release. So I thought it'd be a fun idea to install Windows 7 on a system from the time and explore it a little bit. This Dell Vostro 420 isn't the best system that I have, but it's pretty good for the time. And yes, that is its actual name. This system has an Intel Core 2 Quad Q6600, 4GB of DDR2 RAM, and an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 460. That part isn't period correct at all, but it's close enough, I suppose. This was originally a Windows Vista computer when it was new, however, it's pretty much close enough to a Windows 7 machine, since it was manufactured just five days before Windows 7 released to manufacturing. Its predecessor, Windows Vista, was released two years earlier to mixed response, mostly because it was a nightmare to develop, and when it came out, had terrible performance compared to its predecessor, and didn't work with a whole lot of anything. Windows 7 was originally supposed to be the next major release of Windows after XP, under the name Blackcomb, before that was cancelled because Vista was a huge nightmare. Development began on Windows Vista's successor as early as mid-2007, with some of the earliest leaked builds originating from later that year. By early 2009, a public beta was released, Build 7000, and on July 22nd, 2009, Windows 7 released to manufacturing. Just two years after its development began, and in less than half the time it took for Vista to come out. It's pretty obvious how this happened this way. Windows Vista ended up becoming a pretty major release compared to its predecessor, which was already a good base, but just needed work. They're kind of the same thing. Of course, there were new things that were introduced, as well as a lot of performance enhancements. And yet, despite it being so minor, I think it's a bit of an understatement to say that Windows 7 was a big success. A few years after it released, it overtook Windows XP as the most used version of Windows based on market share, its successor, Windows 8.1, never even came close, and it was only dethroned by Windows 10 in 2018, with Windows 11 following it in 2022. It's still the third most used version even to this day, even if its market share is dwindling these days. And there is still to this day a small group of users who still refuse to migrate from it. I was one of those people who didn't want to migrate from it for the longest time since I didn't like Windows 10 when it came out, so I used Windows 7 for pretty much the entire 2010s. So I have a lot of nostalgia for it, and even though its support ended in 2020, I still use it on a handful of machines, even to this day, such as this Vostro. One of the things that worked in Windows 7's favor is that by 2009, Hardware device drivers had improved a lot, and manufacturers actually had proper drivers for Windows Vista. All of those drivers still worked on Windows 7 for the most part. So pretty much any computer that runs Windows Vista, like this one, can run Windows 7 just fine with all of its devices installed out of the box. This particular computer is only missing the GPU driver because its GPU is several years newer than the OS. Of course, Windows 7 has a pretty similar interface to Vista, including Windows Aero still being present. There have been some minor revisions, of course, one of the most obvious being the taskbar, which is a bit bigger, but now allows you to pin things to the taskbar, something that wasn't possible before on Vista. Several applications that came with Windows were also updated. Internet Explorer 8, updated from 7 on Vista, and can be updated up to 11, as well as Windows Media Player 12, an updated version of Windows Media Center, this is basically the last version of Media Center that they made before they removed it, though you could get it as a paid add-on for Windows 8. Some of the other applications they've revised include Paint, Calculator, WordPad, of which that and Paint were updated to get a ribbon design like from Office 2007, as well as the Windows DVD Maker. Internet games were included again out of the box, after not being present in Vista, and while Inkball was removed, the rest of the games are the same as they were in Windows Vista, which I'm not complaining about personally. I like them. These games can be found in the Games Explorer, just like how they could on Windows Vista. Of course, there could have been other entries in here, and how the system determines if you can run these games 
is by the Windows Experience Index. Except on Windows 7, the max score was updated from 5.9 to 7.9. One of the other things introduced in Windows 7 was libraries. Basically a space where you can add multiple folders into one location and all the files will show up there. I loved this feature back in the day. By default, you get documents, music, pictures, and videos. But you can also make your own libraries. One of the examples I made back in the day was a downloads library, because I have stuff everywhere. The sidebar was also removed, and now the gadgets, previously in Vista, can pretty much sit freely on the desktop. They can form a sidebar, they'll kind of snap to the side, but you can now move them wherever you want. And while most of the gadgets are the same, they also added a Windows Media Center gadget. You could also get more online, just like with Vista, but this functionality hasn't been around for a long time because of security issues. Apparently. The services that require internet don't function properly anymore, but the rest of them work fine. And there are other packs and programs out there to get you third-party gadgets that even still work today on newer versions of Windows. Another addition in Windows 7 was themes. They could contain one or multiple images. You could change the window color, the sound scheme, and the screensaver. Out of the box is chips with six arrow themes and six basic themes, and a theme based on your region. In my case, the United States. All of which have their own sound scheme and window color to differentiate them. Of the regional themes, there is also one for Australia, Canada, the UK, and South Africa. Which I think is a nice touch. Of course, you can also make your own theme, and you can get more online. They really were trying with the customization features on this. Some other additions include revising Explorer and how things are displayed in Control Panel, an arrow snap feature allowing you to easily resize any window by just dragging it to the edge of the screen. There's also the arrow peak ability. By hovering over an open thumbnail on the taskbar, you can preview that window. The included user pictures were updated, and DirectX 11 is now included out of the box. Not everything in the user interface was updated. Some things, like the computer management window for example, and the dialogues for screensaver and system sounds, are pretty much how they were in previous versions of Windows. Though the UI inconsistencies aren't nearly as bad in Windows 7 as they are in Windows 10 today. But I think you kind of get the point. While there were some things introduced, a lot of it still is Windows Vista. Of course, Windows 7 had the big advantage of time. Everything was a bit more developed and just worked better on Windows 7. And while some people, of course, still stuck around on Windows XP, a lot of people did upgrade. Depending on what you do, Windows 7 was the last version of Windows to support processors that did not have SSE 2 like a Pentium 3 or Athlon XP, for example. Though, that ability was removed in 2018 via an update. Some of the other Microsoft programs from around this time include Office 2010, which might as well just be the version of Office for Windows 7. It released in 2010 and ended support in 2020, just like with Windows 7. There's also Windows Live Essentials 2011, which is where Photo Gallery, Mail, Movie Maker, and Messenger went off to, as those programs were no longer included out of the box. Though Windows Live Essentials was pushed as a free update through Windows Update, and was also previously available on Vista and XP. There were also some applications carried over from the Microsoft Work Suite, which pretty much died on Windows 7, since by this point, all of the things you could do with Works could either just be done in Microsoft Office, or on the internet. Microsoft also released a component to Windows 7 called Windows Virtual PC, available to the professional, ultimate, and enterprise SKUs. This was basically a cut down version of Virtual PC that allowed you to run Windows XP on your desktop to have extra compatibility with Windows XP applications, sometimes also called Windows XP mode. Though of course you can also install Virtual PC 2007 on this and it will work just fine. Now updating Windows 7 these days is a bit of an interesting situation. Microsoft released one service pack for Windows 7 in 2010 called Service Pack 1, though most ISOs of Windows 7 have this service pack and a lot of other updates slipstreamed in already. 
These days, you'll likely need to install the SHA2 code signing support updates, as any device that does not have these updates cannot properly run Windows Update. Though if you don't have any of those, then all of these updates pretty much can be found by running Legacy Update these days, which is a pretty useful tool for updating these old versions of Windows. Installing all of the updates on Windows 7 can take a good couple hours to, worst case scenario, days, depending on how good your system is. Since this system is pretty good, it only took a few hours to install all of the main updates. Though it's kind of a pain after getting used to Windows 10, which kind of just does a lot of this automatically, and much quicker. Microsoft also pushed out security essentials over Windows Update in an attempt to have better security on the system since Windows Defender wasn't very useful. And for the ultimate skew, Microsoft also released language packs, which I haven't installed on this system because they take a long time and I don't really need them. Just like with Windows XP, Microsoft put out an update towards the end of Windows 7 life for its end of support notification, recommending people upgrade to Windows 10. They also pushed out a similar update years earlier for users who were still using RTM without any service packs. So can you still use Windows 7 to this day? The answer, unsurprisingly, is yes. I wouldn't personally recommend or condone using an unsupported operating system as a daily driver today, but on a project PC like this, it's just fine, really. It depends on your use case, of course. There are several programs that I use that are no longer supported on Windows 7, but there's also a ton of utilities and other things that either still work fine or have an easily obtainable version that still works fine. Most notably, Chrome and Firefox both dropped support for Windows 7 and 8.1 last year. However, a fork of Chrome, called Supermium, still installs on old versions of Windows just fine. And if I was running the 64-bit version of Windows, then Waterfox, a version of Firefox, would also install just fine on the latest version. But a good chunk of stuff still runs on it, even to this day. 15 years after it came out. Perhaps I need to revisit this topic in another 15 years, I don't know. As time goes on, there are going to be more and more things that are no longer going to support it. It's on a similar trajectory to that of Windows XP with software slowly phasing it out within the next couple years after support ends. For me personally though, given how much I interact with old hardware that can't always run the newest, greatest, extra most bestest operating systems in the world, I don't know that I'm ever going to actually stop using Windows 7. But of course, like most things, nostalgia plays a pretty big part into how Windows 7 is viewed. These days, some people consider the UI design to be stale, and like with all other operating systems, there's a certain window of time where hardware actually works on it. Once Windows 10 came out, Microsoft was pretty much trying to do whatever they could to get people to migrate to it, going so far as making Windows 10 a free upgrade to those running Windows 7, and with the release of the 7th gen Intel Core i-series processors, as well as the release of AMD Ryzen, Windows 7 or 8.1 no longer function without Windows Update not working. And depending on how modern of a system you're installing it on, you may also need to slipstream in USB 3.0 and maybe even NVMe drivers in order to install it properly. And really, installing it on anything newer than 2014 from past experience is kind of just a pain in the butt because drivers just don't really work that well on it. But even after 15 years, I still really like Windows 7. I guess we'll have to see what I think about it in another 15 years or something. <laughs>